So, uh, so that's going to be nine three sevenths to the or times three sevenths to the third, and this one to the n. So we need to simplify in order to get the a r to the n power. That is well sigma n equals zero to infinity. 3 cubed, which is 27, 7 cubed, which is 343. That's uh, 9 times 3 over 7 times 27 over 343, which is 7 cubed. That to the n power. And then multiply, simplify this 9 times 27, which is, whoops. That's going to be a 243. So this will be sigma n equals to 0 to infinity. And that's a 243 over 343, 3 sevenths to the n power. So that's our infinite series in this case. And now it looks like a r to the n power with the starting index at n equals to 0. All right. So let's identify our our parameters here. Number one, a, and number two, r. All right, a equals to 43 over 343, and r equals three over seven. Well, in this case, it was worth doing all these algebraic manipulations because if we observe the value of r, three sevenths, its absolute value, it's a number less than less than one. And that's going to that's gonna mean that the series converges. But otherwise, if in the very beginning you notice that the value of r, it's a number greater than 1, so don't even, don't even bother to do that because it's not, it's going to be a divergent series and why bother do all this? So in this case, well, we will still have to perform the test. Absolute value of r, which is absolute value of 3 over 7. That's the that's three sevenths, which is less than one. This means converges. Converges by the geometric series test. And because this is a convergent geometric series, then we can go ahead and find that infinite sum. All right. So S sub infinity, that's A over one minus R. Where A, we got it here. Let me make some space here. A, which is 243 over 343, divided by 1 minus the value of R, which is 3 over 7. So essentially, we are subtracting 3 sevenths from an integer, which is the same as saying 7 sevenths. That's going to give us 243 over 343 divided by 4 over 7. And well, to make our lives easier with this kind of complex fractions, recall that dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. All right. So, uh, so 243 divided by 343 times the reciprocal 7 fourths. Well, 243 doesn't go into 4, so we're going to leave it like this. However, 343, which is actually 7 cubed, that's going to that's going to leave us with 1 and 49. And we're going to be left with 243 times 1, which is 243, and 49 times 4, which is 196. And well, nothing reduced e even further, so we can call this a final answer. So that's the value of the infinite sum of this convergent series. All right. Let's have a look at another important property here, actually properties of infinite series. And no, this is not supposed to call shifting indices. This is just properties, right? It's a little typo here. So what are we going to have? So the idea is that we have two series and both converge, right? Both converge and both, uh, we can find the infinite sum for both, okay? So 
the thing here is that if we multiply uh, an infinite series by a constant, well, we can find the value of the sum first and then multiply that by a constant or the infinite series of a sum or difference of two expressions is going to be equal to the sum of the two series, right? So here is, the, here is the thing, if for some reason you notice that one of the two series diverge, well, the whole thing diverges in this case, all right? So nothing, uh, because, I mean, essentially you have a convergent series which converges to a value, all right? And then what if, what if you try to add that with something that diverges to infinity? Well, that's infinity uh, plus something. It's just going to be infinity. So it's just going to diverge to infinity. So let's have a look at some examples. Find the sum of each series if it exists. So number one, we have this uh, more elaborate series. So let's uh, actually split it into two series. Okay n equals 1 to infinity, so that's going to be 2 times 3 to the n over 5 to the n minus sigma n equals 1 to infinity, 2 to the n over 5 to the n. Let's rewrite this series. So sigma n equals 1 to infinity, so 3 to the n over 5 to the n, this is the same as saying three-fifths to the n power minus sigma n equals one to infinity two-fifths to the n power. Now, notice something about these two series. Notice they don't start at n equals zero, so we would have to do some shifting of index. However, it would be wordless if for some reason we observed that the values of r uh, would give a divergent series, so let's check. 3 fifths, that value of our world, that's a number less than 1, so that's going to be a convergent series. So yes, it's going to be worth the shifting. 2 fifths, that's also a number below 1, so that's going to be another convergent series. So yes, we, we can do this shifting of indices here. So subtract 1 to make it a 0, but add 1 over here. Subtract 1 to make it a 0, but add 1 over here. All right. So, n equals 0 to infinity, uh, so that's 2 times 3 fifths to the n times 3 fifths minus sigma, n equals 0 to infinity, and that's uh, 2 fifths times 2 fifths to the n power. So I, I reverse the order of the product over here just to just to make it look like a r to the n power. So, number one, let's multiply two times three fifths. That's sigma n equals zero to infinity. That's a six over five times three over five to the n minus sigma n equals zero to infinity. That's a two over five, two over five to the n, all right? And well, again, uh, this, uh, this is a convergent series, this is another convergent series because the common ratio is a value uh, less than one, all right? So, well, to avoid too many calculations in the same line, I'm going to label this as uh, sum one and sum two. And I'm going to do these two separately. All right. So, S1 equals to A over 1 minus R, where the A in this case is 6 over 5, and 1 minus R, which is 1 minus 3 over 5. So that's going to be 6 over 5, and 1 minus 3 over 5, that's the same as saying 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5, which is 2 over 5. We can cancel the fives, so that's going to leave us with a 6 over 2, which is 3. For the second sum, so we have an A of 2 fifths, and 
and 1 minus r, which is 2 fifths. So this will be 2 over 5 over 3 over 5, because that's uh, essentially 5 over 5 minus 2 over 5, that's 3 over 5. And if we cancel the 5s in a similar way, our final answer here will be a 2 over 3. So coming back to the original series, this will be S1, which is 3, minus 2 over 3. Well, let's just simplify this number. So that's 3 times 3, which is 9 minus 2. That's uh, 7 thirds. Final answer. Let's look at another example. I think this will conclude the, no, there's one more, one more page, I think. Okay, so we have another, a very similar series right here. Um, well, so let's split it into two series. So number one, this is sigma n equals one to infinity, nine times four to the n over five to the n minus sigma n equals one to infinity, seven to the n over five to the n. If we rewrite this in the form AR to the N, well, for now, without shifting the index, all right? That sigma n equals 1 to infinity, 9 times 4 fifths to the N power. Well, 4 fifths is a number less than 1, so that's going to be, that's going to constitute an actual convergent series. But this one right here, that's going to be 7 over 5 to the n power and equal n whoops and approaches zero oh not not zero yet not it's a one Whoa. but in this case notice the value of r right here is seven fifths that's a number larger than one so that's going to tell us this is a divergent series so it's not going to be worth to change the index to find the sum because even if this is a convergent sum this one is divergent so you have a number minus something that blows up to infinity that's going to be simply negative infinity right so this is uh, simply the whole thing diverges All right, and that's it. No need to do anything. All you have is to identify the value of R. All right. Let's see what's next about, oh, the N-term test for divergence. So this is the third test that we're gonna learn to test, or the third technique to test series for convergence or divergence. Well, so our theorem states in this case, or our definition that if we find the limit of the expression and if the result is either a number other than zero, whatever, whatever number, positive or negative, it doesn't matter, rational, irrational, integer, decimal, it doesn't matter, or the limit is either D and E or infinity, well, then we say that the, that the series is divergent. So that's why we call it the N-term test for divergence, because that's the only thing this test is useful for, or infinity. However, careful, because if the limit equals to zero, oops, if the limit equals zero, then the test is inconclusive and you would need to go about a whole different test. Of course, we're gonna learn a lot more tests later, uh, but in the meantime, what do we have? Telescoping, geometric, and now we, we have the, the N-term test for divergence, right? So we will have more tests and during the next week. All right, so let's have a look at some examples right here. So let's determine whether the following series converge or diverge. Well, actually, determine whether the following series diverge, we cannot tell convergence for if we use this test, only divergence. All right, so all we have to do here is take the limit as n approaches infinity 
of the expression containing the infinite sum in this case, 2n squared plus 1 over 3n squared minus 1. All right. Let's find the limit of this polynomial over polynomial. Any ideas of what the limit is? It's 2 over 3. It's polynomial over polynomial. Degree in the numerator and denominator are the same. Just go with the ratio of the leading coefficient or the long way by dividing every term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power in the denominator. So that's, uh, that's like the calc one way to compute this limit. So in this case, just go with the ratio of the leading coefficient. This is 2 thirds. And because this limit is not equal to zero, then the series diverges. All right? That's all. That's the only thing we can do about this test: divergence, not convergence. All right. So let's look at another one: sigma n equals one to infinity of e to the n squared. All right. Well. So let's write this as a limit problem. Limit e to the n squared n approaches infinity. And well, so that's, uh, well, let's just find the limit. Plug in infinity. So what is infinity squared? Isn't it just another bigger infinity? And then e to that infinity is infinity. But infinity is not zero, all right, for this reason. We also have that the sequence, I mean the series diverges. All right. What about the next one? What about the last example? So limit one over five n squared plus three as n approaches infinity. What's this limit equal to? Zero. So based on our criteria here, what can we tell about this series using this test? Hmm? We cannot, we, it's inconclusive, right? Test inconclusive. But we will, ha we will learn other tests later, uh, later next week for, I think for this one we can either use, well actually next topic could be useful using the integral test, which is what's next actually, or direct or limit comparison test, which is something we're gonna learn during next week, all right? In the meantime, well, this is the end of the section, so let's go back, let's, let's go to the next one. Um, I mean, oh, um, it's an integral test, mm -hmm. yeah. Although, I mean, I think we are uh, very ahead of the game, uh, ahead of schedule here. So we were supposed to finish, to stop the week um, on, on section 11.2. But let's look at the integral test. Why not? This way we can, we can uh, it's going to be good that we are ahead of, ahead of schedule because later when we get to, uh, what's it called, to the power series and Taylor series, well, those are going to be longer problems, so we want to take our time with those, with those problems, right? So, the integral test. Well, so, we need to be very careful with the conditions. I know, uh, when we look at a series and we try to relate this to some function f of x, pretty much every series is going to look like an integrable function. However, we cannot just use the integral test at our, at our will. Number one, there are three conditions that, uh, that the related function has to meet. Number one, it has to be a continuous function in the interval that we, are, that we have our series. Number two, it has to be a positive series. If we have negative series or alternating series, no, this is not going to work. And number one, or number three rather, and the most important, it has to be a decreasing function. All right, it has to be a decreasing function. And we have to show that these conditions are true for, 
for a given series. Even though they look like integrable, we can do the improper integral in a couple of, in a manner or two. But yes, it's important to check for, uh, for these three conditions. So essentially, this is what we will do. We will convert this infinite series into an improper integral with its corresponding function f of x. And well, we already looked at improper integrals a few weeks ago, and we determined those integrals how they converge or diverge. So we're going to use the integral to the conclusion about the integral to draw conclusions about the infinite series. And if the integrals, the integral converges, well, then the series also converges. But if the integral diverges, then the series also diverges. All right. And another remark here, it's important to consider that the fact, I mean in the case that the series, that the integral converges, well recall, recall that the series is only the area under the curve. However, that's not equal to the value of the infinite sum. That's all, we're using the integral only to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. But that value, it's not the value of the infinite sum. Recall that the only two tests or the only two techniques that allow us to find the infinite sum is only the geometric series and the telescoping series and that's it. So none of them are used to find that infinite sum. All right. So let's use the integral test to determine whether the given series converge or diverge, all right? So we have sigma n equals one to infinity of one over n squared, all right. So we need to check the conditions first. Number or letter A, is it continuous? I mean, if you check the domain of the corresponding function f of x, so f of x is essentially 1 over x squared. Well, this is a rational function with, uh, with an x squared in the denominator. That tells us that the only number that, that is excluded from the domain is 0. All right? However, we are looking at the series from 1 to infinity. Is that, is that a restricted value within the limits of the sum that we are caring about? So in this case, is it continuous on the interval 1 to infinity? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, continuous. Okay, what, what else? What's the next? Okay, positive. Well, letter B. Is it positive? Well, uh, okay, think about expanding some terms. You don't have to really expand the terms, but I mean, uh, for n equals 1, that's 1 over 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 over 2, over 2 squared, that's 1 for 1 over, 1 over 8, plus 1 over, uh, what's the next, uh, 16. Uh, that's giving us only positive terms, right? So, indeed, this is a positive series. Number 1, letter C, rather. For letter C, uh, is this decreasing? Well, I mean, at first glance, it looks like a decreasing function, and there's a couple of ways to, to check. Number one, well, see how every consecutive term gets smaller every time. However, that's not how we're going to show that the function is, is decreasing, rather. Uh, we need to show this in a formal way. Number one, we have our f of x, which is the same as uh, f, of, f of x equals x to the negative 2, and do calculus on these functions. In other words, find the derivative f prime of x equals to negative 2 x to the negative 3, and well, f prime equals negative 2 over x cubed. And in this case, for x greater than or equal to 1, because that's our starting index of the series. And the question is, for all these values of x greater than or equal to 1, plug in your favorite number. What are you going to get? Are you going to get a positive or a negative values? Negative. Well, but this is the derivative. 
what does what what does that tell us about the regional function when the derivative is negative? It's decreasing. So we have slopes that are negative. The slopes of those tangent lines are negative, which again tells us that this is decreasing. So yes. All right. Once we check for these three conditions, we're good to go and do the integral test. So integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. All right. Well, again, we cannot just integrate this using limits f of a minus f of b. Recall that that would imply to do arithmetic with infinity, and we're not supposed to do that. So instead, these improper integrals have to be written as a limit problem. b approaches infinity, integral from 1 to b, x to the negative 2, dx, so we can integrate the x to the negative 2. Well, so add 1 to the exponent. And that's x to the negative 1 over negative 1. Evaluate from 1 to b. So I'm going to take this negative outside of the limit and I'm going to write this 1 over x from 1 to b. b approaches infinity. Well, in this case, negative limit 1 over b minus 1 over 1 as b approaches infinity. Well, where is this going to go to? for as b approaches infinity. Hmm? What's is that value? Zero. Zero? Hmm? And well, we're left with negative zero minus one, which is one. Well, in this case, what is that value going to tell us about the integral? Will that convert or diverge? Anyone? Huh? Converges. Thank you. So the integral converges. So for this reason, therefore, the series. also converges. All right. Let me change the color here. So the series also converges, right? The, the integral converges, the, ser the series also converges. All right. Uh, that's the next, that's the next example. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, sigma n, equ n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. All right. So number one, let's relate this to its corresponding function f of x. So this looks like the function f of x equals to 1 over x. Number one, or letter A, is it continuous? So in this case, again, we have a discontinuity at x equals to zero. It's the function continuous at x equal from one to infinity. Yes, all right. Letter B, uh, positive. And again, it's also positive, right? We don't need to expand the terms. We, we, all we have to do is just look uh, at the form of the series and or expand the terms in, in our head. That's fine. That's valid. And let us see. Decreasing. So we have to do this in the formal way f of x equals 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. Take the derivative. That's a negative x to the negative 2, which is negative 1 over x squared. But well, what is this going to be for 
x greater than or equal to 1. It's also decreasing, right? Every, positive, every value that you plug in for the derivative in between 1 and on, uh, it's going to give us a negative value. That's going to tell us that the slopes of the tangent lines at those values of x are negative and consequently that means that the function is decreasing. So we can go ahead and write this as an integral from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over n, uh, not 1 over n, actually 1 over x, dx, well in this case, uh, let's write again, as a write it as a limit problem, b approaching infinity, integral from 1 to b, x, oh, uh, that's 1 over x, dx, and well the integral of 1 over x dx, that's simply ln of absolute value of x, evaluated from 1 to b, as b approaches infinity. And well, upper limit minus lower limit, that's the limit, b approaches infinity, and uh, that's a limit, I mean uh, ln of absolute value of b minus ln absolute value of 1, well, absolute value, limit of absolute value of 1, that's going to be 0. But what is ln, uh, ln of infinity? Infinity. Well, what's infinity minus 0? Infinity. So that tells us that uh, the integral, integral diverges. Therefore, the series diverges. All right. All right. So, well, these were a couple of examples on the integral test. The next series, which is the P series, yes. I'm going to, I'll, I will make up another example when we meet next time. So, so for example, if you have a series that fails to be continuous within the, in, within the intervals right here, or the, the series that is not related to a positive function, or if you, if you don't get a decreasing function, well, in that case, it's, uh, if one of these conditions is not satisfied, then you cannot use the integral test. You will have to go with another test, right? Uh, but I think, I mean, we are so ahead of the game. The next series, the, ne the next series would be really short. So I think we can do this on Monday. And I think I can make up a, a good example on the integral test.